Coming up on More Than Conquerors. God is more than a way to sustain life, right? He is life, right? He's not the way to life, and that's what we don't get. He's not the way to life, he is life. There is no life apart from him. So Jesus is our answer. Jesus is the answer, right, for the world today. Well, when we study his word, he gives us those answers for others. So it's imperative that we know the word, that we um, develop our spirit of discernment. Uh, one thing that I want to emphasize that we spoke about last week is um, the difference between the, the gifts of the spirit versus the fruit of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right? So the gifts of the spirit, that's a gift to you. It's a gift for you. It's nothing you have to earn or work at or build up. No, it's a gift. You simply have to receive it just like you receive your salvation by faith. Right. Okay? Right. Receive it by faith. That's how you receive the gift of the Spirit. And so I want us all to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Now, this is not a charismatic Pentecostal church by, by any means. It's not. Uh, I believe there's an order to things. And I don't think the Holy Spirit is ever out of order. Um, you want to get out of order and whatever, then do it at home. You know, you don't need to be around here. Do it, you know, so here we're here to learn. We're here to discuss. We're here to talk about God's word, right? And so, yeah, there can be moves of the spirit, that sort of thing, as, as the Holy Spirit directs me and how we um, pray and for, for one another and so on and so forth. Uh, but for the most part, um, things are done here with decency and in order. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean it does not exist. That's what I want to get across, I guess. All right, so we have questions. Um, if you have any questions uh, regarding the questions, then let us know after we answer the question. All right, let's get started. All right, the first question uh, says this. On the morning devotional and also at service, pastor and the leaders at the assembly have mentioned to declare or decree a thing and make it so or it will be so. As believers of the word, do we need the following ingredients to allow this or to allow the blessing change to occur? Faith, relationship with the Lord, and changing our actions and mindset. Uh, yes, so first off, Job 22, 28. Um, so I say it because the word says it. And the leaders say it because the word says it. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, 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 you're, you hang on to the words that I, that I teach and I speak, but it's from the word. I'll never give you my opinions um, unless I'm about the election. Anyway, um, Job 22, 28 says, to decree a thing and it shall be established. So what does it take for that? It takes all the above. It takes you having a, a relationship with God, uh, knowing God's heart, um, being in rhythm with him. Those of you who were over Friday and uh, saw the Chosen with us, you saw how um, in, in the Chosen this episode, I believe it was episode eight uh, or nine, one, one or two, where James and John was out doing the guy's field, the Samaritan, you know, and they're Jews, and the Jews and Samaritans just don't get along. And so when um, a few Samaritans came by and was uh, treating the Jews very poorly, you're being mean to them, uh, being rude, being very offensive, uh, James and John wanted to respond. You know, this is in the, in the, in the movie, of, or yeah, in the movie, of course. Um, they wanted to respond. They wanted to react um, to this, 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 um, this, these offenses. But then Jesus said, you know, you can't represent, you can't represent yourselves and carry the authority that I'm giving you. It can't be. You, you must be, you must have my heart. Mm -hmm. We have to have the same heart as God. Uh, 
we can't go off on our own. That, that shouldn't be. So we need to develop ourselves in Christ in such a way as don't ever ask yourself, oh, what would Jesus do? Jesus would do what he would do. Jesus would do what he was called to do. You do what you're called to do, right? So if someone is called to um, the gift of healing, um, uh, they're in medicine, they're a doctor, then they would act accordingly to that. Where you might have somebody else that's not called to that, so they're not going to um, do that. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, be authentically um, true to how God created you. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So um, to have what we say or to walk in that authority that God has given us, we need to make sure we reflect God and, and all his attributes, which are the fruit of the spirit. Right? The fruit of the spirit are the traits, are the character traits of God. That's who he is. Okay? And that's what we need to, that's what we need to be. Uh, so I don't know whose question that was, but the, was it answered or? Yeah. Okay. Good. Very good. Thank you, Deacon. Okay. The next question. As believers, because we have faith and a relationship with the Lord, does this indicate that we should only expect God's grace? No, <laughs> no, no. So remember everything that we've, we've, we've gotten from God is a gift because of Jesus, okay? So grace is just simply one of the gifts that God gives us, amen? amen. It's just one gift. But there's plenty of other gifts that God has given us. You know, healing, protection. Um, <laughs> he's given us his power and his authority. He's given us his name. He's given us his blood. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. There's so many things that we have. But grace is just, a, it's just one part of it. So, yeah, don't think that's, that's it. No, 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 no. That's not it. That's not it at all. Um, grace fills in the gaps. Grace, when you fall short, when you're not strong enough, when you're not wise enough, when this happens and, you, and, you, and you're, not, you're simply just not strong enough, grace fills in the gaps where you can't fail. That's all. That's what grace is. So is that only it? No. So you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Grace says, I got you. Right? Amen. Amen. We're breezing right through these. Any questions on that? Any other questions? Okay, let's move on along. Okay, next question. What is the best way to get a closer and stronger relationship with God? Very good question. What is the best way to get a closer and stronger relationship with God? How many of us are interested in the answer of this question? No. How many of us don't care to be close to God? How many of you are asleep? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how do I get closer to God? How do I build a strong relationship with God? Okay, first and foremost, I'm going to give you the attributes of this or the, uh, the follow-up behind this statement. The very first thing you need to do to get closer to God and get a stronger relationship with him is to first put him number one. That's the problem. Put him number one in your life. God <clears throat> needs to be the most important thing in your life. Do we understand that? Do we get that? Yeah. Do we really truly understand that God desires to be the priority? Right? He says that I'm a jealous God, right? Yeah. Anytime Let's say any of you females get into a relationship. Uh, you're about to start a relationship with a guy. And the guy just says, uh, well, before this starts, just so you know, I'm a very jealous person. You need to put me first. See, so check this out. Check this out. Why would a female tell a man, no, I'm not going there? Why? It's, 
Why? Okay, but why? Why? Okay, but why? What's the what's that in what's that? Okay, why? Why? If the man, if the man that says I'm a jealous man and then you would well you would accept it. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was the all in all. Right. You see what I'm saying? If he can meet every single need, including eternity. If he was able to save you, you know what I'm saying? So someone coming up, there's no problem. You said, I fully, 100%, 100% submit to you. I'm putty in your hands. You speak it, I'll do it. If the man was everything, and I mean all, 100%, you know what I'm saying? But he ain't, right? He's not. And he never will be. He's not. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So you would agree if the guy was all that in the bag of chips and he could do any and everything he wanted, anything, he was God. You would have no problem submitting to him, right? Right. Uh, of course. So why don't we treat God that way? God is all in all. And he's telling you, I'm a jealous person. I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm jealous. I don't want you to have anything before me. When I say anything, I mean anything. I don't even want you to put oxygen before me. I don't want you to put food before me. I want you to look to loving me before you look to go have lunch. I don't care how hungry you are. This is what he's saying. He says, I'm the bread of life. He says, drink from me. You'll never thirst again. Right? Yes. So what you need is God. But we don't truly realize that. We don't truly realize how much we need God. We need God more than we need anything else. With God, I could spend a night in a den of hungry lions. With God, I could be thrown into a furnace that was heated up seven times hotter than it normally is. You understand what I'm saying? God is more than a way to sustain life, right? He is life, right? He's not the way to life, and that's what we don't get. He's not the way to life. He is life. There is no life apart from him, right? right. Um, those who are out there who are not saved, they're dead men walking. They're dead men walking. There is an hourglass. You remember Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Remember that? And he said, yeah, you got this time, Dorothy. And he turned it over and going out with a red sand or something like that. Going crazy. Well, was it red or white? I don't know. Green? Gee, okay. The sand. And it was running out. The sand was running out, right? That's what they, that, that's, that's, those who, don't, who are apart from God, they're simply wasting their time. They're on borrowed time. Because when it goes out, it's death for eternity. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. So God is life. Once we get our priorities straight, it's okay to have fun. But that's not what you're after. It's okay, to, it's okay to play video games, but that's not what your life consists of. Amusement parks, that's not what your life consists of. Fine, go and do that, go and do that. But remember, focus on God. Are you running toward a stronger relationship with God, or are you just trying to sustain your relationship with God? Are you just trying to Sustain it, keep it alive. 
let the Lord know you're there. Hey, Lord, and then go and do your thing. Or are you in hot pursuit of him? That's why I love this question. How do I get closer to God? I want the fire to burn. I want the fire to burn for God, deep in my heart. I want it to burn for God. I, want, I, want, uh, I don't want to be lukewarm. Remember, he said, I, I wish that you were either cold or hot. But you are lukewarm, so I vomit you out my mouth. We see that? So how do I get a, close, a closer, stronger relationship with God? He needs to be number one in your life. And that takes some practical steps. Practical steps is put it down. Whatever that is, just put it down. Um, sometime last week, and then again this morning, I see people, they're walking their dogs, they're walking their dog, have the dog leashed in one hand, and they're just like this. Just face buried in the phone all the time. The world's passing you by, going on around you, and you're just glued to the phone, walking your dog. What is that? Put it down. What a great time to pray. You go out and walk your dog. If I walk my dogs, I use that time, but I don't. I make the kids do it. Right. That's a great time. By yourself, just have a conversation with God. So here's some, here's some ways. Spend time with them, ample time with them. Literally spend time with God. Don't be afraid of that. Spend time with them. Not thinking about what you're going to do at work. Not trying to get him to solve this problem or, or what, what should I do here, what should I do that. Not begging for your needs or wants or whatever it may be. No. Lord, why are you so awesome in my life? Why, like... You're always there. Every time I turn around, Father, I, your word it has something. Father, thank you for the church that you brought me to. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Just talk to him. Lord, it's a beautiful day. Lord, I wonder if it's going to rain this Christmas. Or we're going to have a hot Christmas. Just talk to him. Talk to him. You understand what I'm saying? So spend time with him. Pray. Talk to him. So spend time. When you're spending time with him, you don't have to say anything. You can just be right there in his presence. Just be there. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I invite your presence here with me now and just sit there he may say something to you he may not but but learn to sit there in the presence of God amen, amen. man get to know God by studying and meditating his word let's get to know him let's study his word you know, go to John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. King James. It says, in the beginning was the Word. Listen to this. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when you study his Word, you're learning about him. It's one and the same. God and his word is one and the same. When you read your Bible, when you open your Bible, you're, you're learning a trait or attribute of God. What did God do in this situation? Wow, look at this situation. Look what he did here. That's God. Get to know him. Get to know him. How do you get a closer, a stronger relationship with God? Worshiping him. Just worship him. Don't be any time constraints. Don't give yourself any time constraints. Ooh, I got to do this. I got to do this. No. Uh -uh. Nope. Remember the story about Mary and, Mar and Martha? Mm -hmm. 
Mary's at the feet, just at the feet of Jesus, just worshiping, talking to him, and, you know, just listening to him. Jesus telling stories. They all having fun. And Martha in the kitchen just working. She got pies going. Unliving pies. That's how nasty them. <laughs> she baking bread. She's doing all, she's doing all, cooking meals, whatever, for everybody. And she goes in and says, Jesus, I'm doing all the work. And my lazy sister right here, she ain't helping me at all. And Jesus rebuked Martha. Say, hey, uh-uh. Mary chose to do what is best. Your parties and food and gatherings, you can always do that anytime. I won't be with you uh, forever. I'm not going to be here long. So she's choosing the best. We need to learn to get time restraints out, responsibilities, and just fall down to your knees. I don't care what's going on, what's due. Just spend time with him. Time. Spend time with him. Worship him. Worship him. Do you know what true worship is? True worship is putting yourself aside. True worship is submitting to him. Put yourself aside. Put, put your thoughts, your wants, your needs, your desires, and just worship him. Thank him for what he's already done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who in here is homeless? Nobody. Worship him. Thank him. You got a house. You got somewhere to live. This homeless, they're going, it's just on a rise. For whatever reason. You can put him on economics, you can put him on drugs, alcohol, whatever. You ain't there. Thank you, Lord. But by the grace of God, thank you. Amen? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Praising him. These are all the ways on how to get a stronger, closer relationship with him. Praise him. There's so many things you can praise him for. Constant, uh, consistently and constantly put him before yourself, before your own interests. Consistently, constantly. In other words, if someone were the most important in your life, how would you treat them? Right? Who's the most important person in your life? Who do you love the most? Who don't you want, to, you don't want to let go of? Let's start there. <laughs> but we don't. Let's start treating God in that manner. Always wanting to be with him. Want to hold him. Want to talk to him. Want to hear their voice. Just want to hang out with that person. Let's treat God that way. Right? Let's treat him like you treat your most loved person here. Whether it's a mother, father, spouse. It could be a child. Whatever it may be. But let's treat him important. You know, I think one of the things that work against us is because he's, so, he's always there. He promises to always be there. We take that for granted. Oh, he's always there. Oh, he's understanding. Oh, he's full of mercy. So... You start to neglect what you're familiar with. Familiarity breeds neglect. Familiarity breeds neglect. You get so familiar with that person. You ever seen someone, first they were reverenced and respected, and then you get to know them, and it's like, ah, eh, you start kind of saying things you probably wouldn't say otherwise. You wouldn't say when you first met that person. It's familiarity, and it breeds neglect. Let's watch that in, your, in our homes as well. Just because that person's there, don't take them for granted. Yeah. Don't neglect them. Okay? Anyway, so that as that question. Any, any follow-ups from there? No, nope, we're good. Okay. How you doing, Frank?
The next question. How do I know God is telling me to do something and it's not just my own thoughts? Okay. Um, how do I know God is telling me to do something? Refer back to the, the, refer back to the previous question. So how do I know God is telling me to do something and it's not just my own thoughts? Um, the closer you get to God, the more you recognize his voice. Right? So... Lisa, close your eyes. Close your eyes. So now, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say something, and then someone else is gonna say the same thing. And you tell me, <laughs> you tell me uh, who's saying what. Lisa, I love you. <laughs> you got jokes. <laughs> okay, so no, that was key, the first one. <laughs> you said color. Okay, but you knew my voice. You knew that wasn't me the first time. You know, I told you. I was like, I'm going to tell you first. You knew that wasn't me the first time, right? So you know my voice because you know me. You've heard me speak. So the more time you spend with God, the more you'll recognize his voice. It's that simple. In, who was the first or second Corinthians? 11, uh, second Corinthians, 11, uh, 14. You don't, have to, you don't have to go there. Says, Satan comes as an angel of light. He transforms himself into an angel of light where he pretends to be God, right? right? So now, if Keith were to pretend to be me, would you know our voice? Mm -hmm. He has a deep voice. <laughs> and I sound like Twinkerbell. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, uh, my vo our voice is different. You're going you're gonna to be able to differentiate between his voice and my voice. So the more time you spend with God, you're going to be able to differentiate between Someone who's faking to be God, which he will, um, you're going you're gonna to differentiate between the two, right? Uh, I will tell you this. More times than not, it's your own voice. Oh, was that God? No, it was you. Because you want to do something. And, and you want to you wanna, you wanna, you wanna go a certain way. And you're looking for permission to do it. You're just looking for permission. Looking for an excuse to do it. So we gotta really be, we gotta really be cautious of that. But spend time with God, and that's how you differentiate between God and uh, yourself or the devil. Amen? Amen. Any other questions, follow-ups from that? Okay. Okay, question five. Is sickness a curse? Yes. Next. One, two. <laughs> Deuter Deuteronomy. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. From verse 15. So 1 through 14, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 talks about the blessing. Deuteronomy 28, starting at verse 15, starts talking about the curse. I'm just going to read a few, uh, just the beginning. At verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken. What does hearken mean? Listening with the intent of doing. That's right. Again. Listening with the intent of doing. Hearken means to listen with the intent of doing. Okay, that's what it means. It doesn't mean just listen. It means listen with the intent of doing. 
Okay? So it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these, what? Curses. Curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall you be in the city, cursed shall you be in the field, cursed shall, you, shall your basket be. So it's talking about all, how cursed you are, right? <laughs> so then we can go down to 21. The Lord shall make thee a pestilence, cleave unto thee, uh, un until he has consumed thee from the land. Man, a pestilence until you're gone, until you're dead, until you're no more. Um, the Lord shall smite thee with, consum with consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning. Dang, what did you do? <laughs> and with the sword and with blasting, with mildew, and they shall pursue these until you perish. Now, listen, this is what's awesome about that. If you hearken, those are all the things that should not be on your body. Inflammation. Pestilence, these diseases, these sicknesses, it shouldn't be on you, right? I hearken unto the Lord. I am his. He abides in me. I abide in him. He doesn't say you have to be perfect. It's not about that. Do you acknowledge him? Do you love him? Does your heart belong to him? If it does, then none of these things have no right to be on your body. And you need to come against it in the name of Jesus. And he's giving you his name for you to be able to do that. Amen? Amen? So those things are naming everything that shouldn't even touch you. Has no right to come near you. So you see any clue of it on your body, you come against it in the name of Jesus. Right? Find it in the Word. Find it. Use that like a little index. Be like, okay, uh, do I got that? No, okay. And just keep going. And be ready to come against everything that, that's trying to come upon you. Right? It's right there, black and white, in the Word. It's right there. First 15 verses or 14 verses is the blessing. <laughs> From 15 down, it's talking about the curse. Amen? Amen. You keep God of His Word. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I be losing myself sometimes. Yeah, so that's that. So, any follow up from that? We can discuss. You guys are quiet. Why are you guys so quiet? Okay, okay, okay. Bless you. Take me in, good. Okay. Okay. All right, let's. Okay. Next question. How does one overcome temptation slash addiction? Mm. Say these went over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. it's very, it, it's, it's near impossible for these ailments and Addictions, temptation, whatever. All these attacks, these, these darts, these, these fiery darts from the devil. When you're close to God, when you're in sync with God, they have to fall away. But it's not mechanical. It's not just going through the motions. God truly wants our heart. Like, when no one's around, what are you doing? Are you acknowledging him? Are you loving on him? What does your heart truly say? What is the position of your heart when it comes to God? What is it really? Understand what I'm saying? That's what matters. That's what matters. How is your heart before God? So, dive into the word. Realize your value. Realize the price that God paid for you. Know that you're of value. Know that you're of worth. Know that you're worthy. Not for anything that you've done, but for the price God paid for you. I'm worthy. Right? Someone who's, something that's precious. Name something, and it could be a material thing. I mean, it's not a trick, okay? Name something that you value, uh, uh, something, just something that you own. 
It could be a diamond ring. It could be whatever. What is it? You got that in your head? Does anybody put, raise your hand when you have something. I don't want you to tell it out loud, but just, I just want everybody to have something. Something of value. Raise your hand when you have it. Just raise your hand when you have it, okay? Okay. You, you got it? No, not yet. You don't got anything of value? Come on, get something. You got it? Okay. Got it? You guys back there? Okay. Okay. All right. That thing, that's something of value, right? Right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Now, pitcher cover with mud. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. Right. That's, that's horrible. You don't want to stuff covered with mud. It's valuable to you. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, all this trash, this garbage that the world has, that the devil is constantly trying to put upon you. God doesn't want that. He doesn't desire that whatsoever. The problem is you're okay with it. You're okay with it. He doesn't want that on you. He doesn't want, he doesn't want a spraying, swollen finger. He doesn't want that on you. If anything that's on you that we just read in, in, in Deuteronomy 20, he doesn't want that on you. That's not his will. Right? right? But the problem is we're accepting it in our own lives because you don't know your value. You don't know how beautiful and wonderful you are. You don't know. You don't realize that yet. You don't realize that. But God, of all creation, heaven and earth, loves you and thinks you're valuable. Right? Let's, get, let's, let's, let's go with God's mind on this. I'm valuable. So stop allowing that junk on you. Stop allowing this garbage on you. Okay? Something comes up against you, guess what? He's there fighting for you. Amen. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. As a tither that we go over every week, Malachi 3.10, he rebukes the devourer for our sake. He rebukes the devourer. He says, no, uh-uh. You don't touch him. You run around and do all this to all these other people, but that's, he's mine. She's mine. She's of value to me. You just have to agree with it. Agree with it. Amen? Amen. Um, and then, praying and fasting. Addictions and temptations. You're going to be, you, you, say you have some kind of addiction. Others' addiction, alcohol. It might be a drug problem. It may be a coffee problem. It could be a pornography problem. And you're laying there, and that craving comes up. Now, you can do all the praying and fasting you want to and, and, and crying out to God all you want to. But the bottom line is you're going to have to make the choice to say no. He'll be there. He'll help you. But you're going to say no. And then you dive into the word. Put, on, put, put something on. Put the word of God on. You have to constantly make that connection. You gotta, you, that craving comes, that temptation comes. No, you run to God. You run to God. It's, you know what it is? Here it is. This just, this just came to me. This is not planned. It's like you're a little kid at a playground, and the big bad monster comes up to kidnap you. That's that craving come to take you into itself, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. The big bad wolf comes to kidnap you. Now, when you see that big bad wolf coming, that's the craving coming, coming, you're pondering on your partner. That's, you're on the playground, you're looking at the big bad wolf come. What should that little kid do? Run to mama, or daddy if he's there. <laughs> you run to mama. I see that coming, and you run to mama. You're there, you see that craving is about to try to tempt you. Nope, you don't even give it a chance. And you run your high to the word. Nope, you open the word, you get, or turn the video, nope, put on, put on, put me on, put uh, a minister on, whatever, whether if it's Kenneth Copeland or uh, Bill Winston, you, yeah, run, put it on. That's what you do. Don't give it a place. Don't even let it play in, don't, don't have a conversation with it. Don't debate with it. Don't debate with it. 
Don't try to use your willpower. You're not strong enough. You're not strong enough. Willpower is not strong enough. It ain't. It ain't strong enough. Run to the word. If you don't run to mama, it's because you want to get taken. You haven't yet said no. You haven't stood and said no. You haven't given a valuable quality no. You're like, no. Oh, stop it. Stop. That's what you're doing. Stop. Don't do that. You guys know people like that. But no, when you just know, a guy's talking to a girl, and she's, stop, stop. He ain't gonna stop? No, he ain't gonna stop. But if you're like, stop, you're like, ooh. Right? You get that quality no, and go get out of there. We gotta stop playing with it. Amen. Amen. This is how we win. It's gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta be more important. Our relationship with God and what He has for it has to be more important than what the world has. You know what I mean? Sin is fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sin is fun, and often it feels good, but it ain't. It won't get you far. It's, it's. It, it, you have to make the decision to say, you know what? Enough of this. This is a big cycle. It's just over. It's just, and you're never satisfied. How about go to more? How about, how about making a decision that so many other people don't make? They, they, they don't make the decision to, to no. So make a decision that separates you from everybody else. And keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. How about that? You know what I mean? Now that's worth it. That's a life worth living. Instead of having a cycle of just garbage, 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 right? Highs and lows. Amen? Amen. Amen. So dive into the word, realize your worth, pray fast. Ultimately, just say no, mm -hmm. you know? Nancy Reagan, you know, they made fun of her, but, but she, I mean, just say no. You know what I mean? Just no. I'm done with this. No. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whatever that addiction you had in your, in, in your mind, yep, okay. Before the end of service, I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm, I'm going to pray for each and every one of us that that spirit that it is broken. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep going. We've got a few more. How do you deal with negativity as a Christian? That's the life of a believer. <laughs> That's, uh, you're never going to get rid of negativity, ever. Ever. Until you leave here and you go to heaven, you're going to, and then, even then, because remember, he's going to, the, the devil after the thousand year, uh, the, the millennial, after the thousand, the thousand years, he's going to be released again. To go out and try to deceive, you're gonna be dealing with negative again. Right? For a short time. You know, when God says short time, that could be <laughs> 6,000 years. You know what I'm saying? Come on, a short while. I'll be back soon. It's 2,000 years later. Come on, man. Let's do this. Anyway, you're gonna be dealing with negativity all the time. Um, you have to stop seeing yourself as an adversary to negativity and be superior to it above it. I don't engage with that. I see what you're bringing. I won't engage. I'm the answer through Christ to the negativity. I don't join in with it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Negativity doesn't have a place in my life. You have, so how do you deal with it? By using the wisdom of God. What should I be a part of? What, what shouldn't I be? But your job as an ambassador is to deal with the negative. Not join in with it. You're more valuable, remember? Right. <laughs> so not to join in with it, but to be above it. In um, Avengers, uh, when Loki and 
you gotta help me with this. Um, what's his name? Patch? Nick Fury. When he was talking about um, um, boot versus a, the oh. ant, like what quarrel does the ant have with the boot? Mm -hmm. uh, you probably don't know. Anyway, what I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, an ant, does the ant fight with your shoe? No. None at all, does it? No. I don't want that ant in here, and I'm about to step on it. Does the ant have any say? No. no. Well, you're the boot. You're the shoe. All this necklace that's going around, you're above it. <laughs> you have the name of Jesus. You have the power and authority. But if you get down in the weeds with it, fighting with it, what is that? You're better than that. This is how you handle negativity. You are going to have to deal with it. Don't try to run away from it. But you're above it. Don't get involved with it. Grace, follow up. I'm just thinking right here, when you're saying um, to be superior to it, uh -huh. do you mean to, like, let it go, ignore it, or to confront, and but talk, like, have a discussion? Okay. Um, I'm not understanding that. Okay. So can you, thank you. The Bible says, answer a fool according to his folly, least he is wise in his own eyes. What that simply means is, if you have an opinion on something, and you come to me and you say something to me, and it goes against what I previously said, previously said, right? I'm gonna discern right then and there. Do you truly wanna know? Are you coming at me with what your current thinking is? Do you truly want to know, or do you just want to argue? So that's step one. If you just want to argue, and you say your thing, like, okay, I'll just walk away. I don't need to engage with you on that. Or I'll just stay there and just change the subject. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Hey, that's a beautiful blouse. Oh, little shades, what, what are they? Ray Bans? You see what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be uh, adversarial. It doesn't have to be a conflict. Now, if you truly want to know, then I'm going to, then I'm like, okay, so this is where it's coming from. You know, the word says this, this, and this. And off these principles, these biblical principles, I believe that this platform, this platform is, this is how you vote. This is how you go. This is whatever you do. So, um, that, that, yeah, so that's what I mean. Um, you can choose to ignore it and walk away, depending on who the person is. It's totally discerned. You want to discern. Um, one thing is know that you're here to plant seeds of love. I want to love on everyone. Some people aren't ready. Some people will just, you're not, you're not called to everyone. Like, I know that this church is not for everyone. It's not. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have the demeanor of like a Joel Osteen. I don't. And I, I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to. He's successful at doing, doing what he's doing. Okay, that's, that's his. My, my, my path, my road is different, you know? Um, so we, we're just different, and, that, and I'm fine with that. Uh, you gotta be comfortable with who you are and what you're called to do and what you're called not to do. So, uh, yeah, so to each his own. But then, you know, if Sal has the patience to deal with this person and talk to this person, whatever, and you don't, you just walk away, well, you don't have to beat up Sal for doing what he did. That, good, okay. Everyone needs someone, mm -hmm. right? So it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't for me. I stay with you, I might hit you. But so I can have patience. You, you could be just neutral. You know what I mean? So um, we just have to learn how to all just mesh. You be you. Don't you ridicule me for being who I am because I don't want to have to walk away from you. I want to love on you. But if you keep doing this, I'm going to have to walk away from you. You understand what I'm saying? And I'll walk. I love to exhale people. I, I have no problem with that. Not that I look forward to doing it, but I have no problem with it at all. I'll exhale and walk away like that. No one has me. There are no ties. Family ties, blood ties, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. Okay? So we're called to love one another, but it don't always work out that way. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
How does one know that they have been saved? When you die, it gets hot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm you were not. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> How does one know before then? <laughs> you want to you get to know that you're saved before that happens. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, by faith. By faith. It's all by faith. You know, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came here, died on the cross for your sins, and then rose three days later, and now seated at the right hand throne of the Father, if you truly believe that, you're saved. Period. You're saved. Don't add anything else in there. Do not add anything else in there. Well, it says you have to be baptized. You should. But the thief on the cross wasn't baptized. He says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. So don't become a, legal, uh, a legalist. Don't be legalistic, okay? Um, that's it. You don't have to pay for anything. There's no penance. You don't have to do any of that. That was the old belief before Martin Luther, before that 91-point thesis that he put on the door in the Catholic Church. Remember that? He put that thesis up there because he went out to study it for himself because people were doing this, 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 and it was just tradition, tradition, tradition. But then all of a sudden, Martin Luther, a very educated man, was reading it for himself. He was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Salvation is a gift freely given. So he wrote what he found. He wrote this 91, these 91 points and of uh, this, this monastery, this school, if you will, and put it on the door, put it on the door of the school. And people went by and started reading. They're like, well, what? And it became huge. He didn't know it was going to be that big. He was just like, I'll just you know, point things out. And it became huge all around there. So now that's what started the Protestants and Catholics. Where Catholics says, no, you got to earn it. You gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pay for these things. But it went way off track to something else. And Martin Luther was like, I mean, this guy, he was, he truly disciplined himself. He wanted God, he, he, he was Catholic through and through. But a lot of the Catholics back then, they didn't know how to read. And so they depended upon the priest to tell them what it said. Well, Martin Luther, he came on the scene, and he was like, wait a minute. He read Latin. He knew Latin and of a few languages and read it and, and, and made public say, wait, 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 this is what the word is saying. This is what the Bible is saying. That I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to earn it. It's a gift freely given. Salvation is a gift free from God through Jesus. And so that's what birthed the whole... Uh, Protestants. It stood for to be in protest of. That's what Protestants was. Okay, so when you hear the word Protestant, that's what that means. So it's is is they're, they're both Christian, but this is saying, hey, well, the Bible says this. It doesn't say I have to earn. I don't have to earn it. So I don't know how it is in Catholic Church now. Um, were you Catholic too? You are. Yeah. Or. Catholic, right? Do, do, do you actually read your Bibles there at, at, um, in church? See, so yeah. So they still do it today where you don't bring your Bible, you don't read the Bible. They'll choose a passage to, and then they'll read it. They might do it in Latin or whatever it may be, but they read it and you don't study the scriptures like that. What Martin Luther says, no, nah, we need to study the scriptures for ourselves. You know, and then you find out that Jesus is that high priest. I don't have to go to this man anymore. That was Old Testament. Going to the man was Old Testament. But now that Jesus died on the cross, that veil, that separation, the apparatus that separated you from the priest, that veil has been torn in two from top to bottom. It's been ripped. So now I can come boldly before God myself. You see that? Right. So that's the difference. And that's what's, that's, so how do you know you're saved? It's by faith. 
That's it. Just take that. Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross for your sins, and he is now risen. Three days later, he rose and is now seated at the right hand throne of the Father. If you truly believe that, you're saved. Don't worry. You're good. You're okay. Don't let the devil trick you like, well, am I really saved? Do I really believe? Yeah. Okay? Amen? Amen. That's one of the famous sayings that Martin Luther said, by sola fide, which means by faith alone. By faith alone. <laughs> by faith alone. That's it. So then the last question is, we know that we are not waiting on God for anything. He is waiting on us. Where's the line between waiting on God and having patience? <laughs> so let's so listen and obey. Um, we need to learn how to listen and obey. So uh, remember grace, you can't fail. So do what the Lord's telling you to do. If you're declaring something, you're selling the word, then just know that, just have patience, keep declaring, confessing the word. If there's something missing, he knows how to get it to you. He knows how to tell you. You know, I remember I was, um, when I was, I think I told this story before, but um, I was 19, 18, 18 years old, and, and um, the, um, my truck was repoed. I had a pickup, and it was repoed because I was smarting off to the guy. <laughs> I was so rude. I was smarting off to the guy, and uh, I think I was like a day late, or not even day, like the pen was due, and I had it. I think I sent it out or something, but he wasn't going to get it till Monday, but he was supposed to have it by like Thursday or Friday, like one of those things. And, and, and I went to the store, my mom or something, and came back, my truck was gone. He, he pulled my truck. I was like, you got my truck? He goes, yep. And you ain't getting it back till you pay it in full. And so I, uh, I was like, man, I repented what I did, and I got kind of thing. And then um, um, I said, I can't just give you the payment. He says, nope, all of it. I want all of it. And so it was like 15, almost, no, uh, like 10, 12,000, something like that. And so, um, and I was praying, I was declaring the word, that kind of thing. And then, it was like maybe three or four days before it was due. He said, I had to the 15th. And I remember I was sitting down on the, on the rocking chair and on the lazy boy. And, and I was listening to Kenneth Copeland. And he came on and said, and it was at the end of the broadcast. He was talking, he was praying. He goes, you know what? There's someone out there uh, is believing God for or something, this or that, whatever. He said, but you're putting your faith in, in something that's dead. You're putting your faith in money. Because I was asking for the money. He said, hey, I need this much to get my truck. And I was asking for this much money. He says, you got to put your faith in something that's dead. God has um, uh, tons of ways to meet this need. So stop looking to money to meet your need. And let God meet your need. And I said, oh, wow. I've been, this whole time, for the last couple of weeks, I've been praying this way. Right? I missed it. Mm -hmm. Dang it. I missed it. Do you think God was back there like, well, you sure did. You sure did miss it. No. Um, it corrected me. I was like, oh, my goodness. I repented that. I said, nope. And I, I, re I corrected myself. It was the next day. What was the next day? Later that day. The guy calls me up. And he goes, um, hey, you got the money yet? I said, no, but my father's working on it. My father's been dead since I was two. You know, I don't know my father. I was talking about God. And, I, and whether he knew that or not, I don't know, whatever. And I said, um, nope, but my father was working on it. And he said, your father was working on it, huh? I said, yes, sir. And he goes, well, how much you have? I said, just over five. He goes, okay, um, well, bring that down with a co-signer, and I'll give you a truck back. Boom, just like that. So it doesn't matter. God is not a legalist. God is looking to help you. He's looking to redeem you out of the situation you're in. Even if it's your fault. He's not like us. It could be your fault. And he still wants the best for you. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I forgot what your question was. So listen and obey. Waiting on God and having patience. Have patience. 
He doesn't get it to you. You can't mess it up. You can't mess it up. Rest. Tranquilo. You can't mess it up. You were created for a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says that you are God's workmanship. Created to do good works. Go out and do what God's called you to do. Love God, love others. Remember, Jesus is Lord.